Who's got the bog roll? Or the TP, as we called it last time. The Tony Parsons. <laughs> Somebody was handing toilet pot poke around going TP and then they're like, it's Tony Parsons. <laughs> we get some. I'll take it. <laughs> 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 I was having a question and then it solves by being quiet. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Winnie. Well, that's sweet. You moved that from toilet bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good work. The worst feeling that's ever going to be felt over fear, over anything. And it's all made up in our made up language and limited words, but there's that sense of abandonment. It's always that sense of loss of love. Always comes down to that. But that's it, that's the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, like um, after liberation, right? The feeling of uh, abandonment. <coughs> the 
doesn't happen that anymore. You're so yeah. cute. <laughs> 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 the thing is, is like it's again got to be the same question because what happens is there's this feeling of abandonment, believe it or not, but it, this feeling comes up and it's always a feeling of slightly like you've got something wrong, like you've lost something. And it's, a, it's such an energetic expression, it's not even nameable really, but it's a sense of loss of something. And then the thoughts come up, but after liberation, that won't be experienced anymore. You won't find any safety in my answer to that. Like if I say yes, that's it's like it's like um I'm trying to think of a good analogy. It's, like, it's, it's not, creating another story. Yeah, it's creating another story. It's like me telling you that to fix your car you've got to clean it. Mm-hmm. Like if the engine's like it's <laughs> I could answer the question, but it, it always comes down to that feeling of the lack of the control, of not being able to find what you're looking for. And then it's, so it tells another story. So it says, okay, so after liberation, I won't experience this anymore. And you won't find it in that thought. You find it in that feeling. It's here, right now. Yeah, it's still in totally, It's completely here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always here. But the feeling and then the story goes into the future. But it's so cute, that question might have to be asked a hundred times, <laughs> or however many times. It's always yourself answering. It's never me answering, it's always you talking to you. So remember that you're free. So again, no question answered. <laughs> I'm a dancer. Lisa, yeah. it doesn't matter if in this form it has um, fear, beauty, or anything. It doesn't matter if what? Yeah. In this form, has fear, guilty, or it matters for the person. It matters to you that you have fear and you have guilt. Like that, that they come with matter. So guilt comes with I should have done something different. It should be something else, and it comes with looking at the future. But it, it doesn't matter to God or to nothingness or to to this. How could it matter to this? And this is who you really are. This. That, but this doesn't. This doesn't have the ability to register matter. It creates a person which cares about guilt. The person and guilt kind of aren't separate, though. It creates a dynamic that cares about the experience, but it can't care. It's, but that. This is who you are. Not that person that cares. If it's there, that's what's there. And like everything, it always moves. So as soon as you think you've pinned the experience, oh, there's another one. I was uh, reassured by <laughs> uh, I was just got a uh, sense of reassurement when you said, Oh, that's the bottom line, that's it. <laughs> so something like, oh god. Because in my in the fear is also well how how Terrible than it get, yeah. the words that <laughs> Mama said. So. And it's a bottom line. And I felt just a little bit like, oh, so, but then later on, there's, there's no bottom, there's no line. So it's still, it's not a, it can't be, it can't be reassured that it's ground, you know. So that was, that was okay. Yeah, but yeah. somehow I felt, oh, great, great. Because in this 
cry and just totally abandonment. You, you, you also are afraid that you, that you will fall deeper. even more and more, and it'll go on forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that will be a permanent state of things, yeah. which is an so, absolute yeah. lie. It can't ever be the permanent state of anything. But yeah, that's what the fear says. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 A whole journey was taken. <laughs> yeah, and then the bottom, the bottom is, is no, no bottom, there's no line, but that, mm. there's no abyss either. I mean, there's just no, I don't know. Yeah. So that's, I don't need this reassurance at all either. Mm. When she says fall and fall, it's be not afraid, there's no bottom. But, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it's funny that the child or whatever in each other is so also easily reassured. There's this with it. It's kind of thing. This is also yeah. volatile. Yeah. 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 Attention cannot be forced to dwell in I amness. It's no, something it's that happens, happens spontaneously, spontaneously. And attention, you could say, is something that's happening in forms. So, like attention, it's like saying to the water, can you stay still? Like the, the, the river, can you stay still? It's got nothing to do with it. So attention is the flow of things. So you're asking the flow of things to stop, but the flow of things, nature, is to flow. The backside, though, is still. But it's not about the attention going into stillness. It's there. It's just as the fog begins to clear of focusing so much on things, it becomes so apparent. But attention is flowing. The tension moves, that's the flow. That's part of the flow of things. Listen, but if the idea comes up that better activity would be to try and make the attention still, then that's divine. It's not that's still in things. You just know the difference. But if you're listening to a teacher that says, keep the attention still, and there's an attraction to that, that is the flow of things, so there's perfection. It's not about doing or not doing things. It's just that the difference between the movement and the stillness, mm. or the movement and the nothingness, the flow is meant to move. And it moves in its, all its funky ways. And the freedom is in the movement. And the tension is part of functioning, and the attention is not separate from the world. It moves. It's not somebody's attention. It's not somebody's attention that keeps it still. So it becomes apparent we're not thoughts. And then we believe, okay, with the attention that can even potentially look at thoughts or not look at thoughts. And it's still all the mind dividing. We think we're not the thoughts, we're the attention moving before the thoughts. We can even focus on the thoughts or focus on the world. But attention too is a movement just like thoughts. So it doesn't matter where the attention goes. Well, nothing matters, but if there's the impulse to want the attention to be a certain way, then that's, yeah. that's what's happening. But nothing, you, you can't pick out anything in the flow which is leading to this. It's all just flow. Is it a bit like um, recognizing the stillness by observing what comes by. Nobody really recognises it. No, but 
There is a sort of realization. It's a, maybe you could call it a realization. It's a knowing beyond intellectual understanding that mm -hmm. there's this, there's this, there's an emptiness and a fullness simultaneously happening, and the the only problem for the human, which ultimately is not a problem, is that the it's kind of got so absorbed in the movement of things in itself and what it thinks it knows that the emptiness seems veiled. Mm -hmm. or the, so it kind of gets lost in its form and who it thinks it is and what it thinks it needs to get and that it needs to get pleasure from form. Where its home is it happening. And the movement and the stillness are kind of the same thing. <laughs> But attention is in the flow as well. Attention is a functioning happening in the brain. I presume in the brain, God knows where it's really happening, but it's part of the functioning of the human. <clears throat> not this, not that, not this, not that, nowhere to sit. <laughs> But I don't mean to negate anything. So if the the person's feeling the energy to want to meditate or to want to, then that's what it's got to do or put the attention somewhere. But it's ultimately not anybody doing anything. Actually, why I'm saying this is uh, because I felt slightly uncomfortable a while ago. Yeah. And um, I was rejecting that. Yeah. Uh, you can't feel uncomfortable. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I kind of, when it was quiet, just, I decided, okay, fine, it's what it is, it's, yeah. I could, like, see it. Yeah. Uh, and then it passes. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I say, um, by observing, that, mm, the words, maybe, I don't know if I'm using the, the, the yeah. right words, but by observing what it actually was, it was all okay, the clock here. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, someone and the same thing, that's true. I always say yeah. it's the opposite way around, but it's just my language. Is that what happened in that moment is the person that was trying to find a strategy to get out of it collapsed, and then there was just what was happening. Yeah. And then in what's happening, there's never a problem, and these energies are wanting to go forward. Exactly. Yeah. Just, no, yeah. It's always a loss, I always think. Yeah. It's never an activity. You said it's always a loss? Yeah, it's a loss of a functioning rather than an activity that you get to. It's a loss of the activity of the person that's looking for a better future mm -hmm. and looking for a way to get out of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then believes it's separate from the flow. Mm -hmm. Believes it's separate and the flow will create happiness. Mm -hmm. The flow is a very much from Meshpolsika word. You understand what I mean by the flow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean the movement of life. The manifestation of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the movement. And the flow I tend to mean more the external, but I mean it as the internal as well. Like it's not, there's not an external intent, it's just energy. Mm. And it's the loss of that dynamic that's trying to stick on to forms. The freedom is the fact that it's all happening. Not the forms, not the activity, not the attention moving somewhere, not you getting to something, it's always what's happening. No, loss is that word. I don't mind experience. It? Yeah, it's an experience that word, isn't it? Full on loss. Yeah. Such an initiative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's more energetic uh, <laughs> in the movie. Yeah, when I was, an experience. Yeah. Like a, but when I was a kid, the, in Christianity, I wasn't really brought up a Christian, but I went to Catholic school. And I remember hearing the quote, to know God is to live in a perpetual state of loss. And it was like, I knew exactly what was meant beyond the words. Like, mm -hmm. a, like it's, it's never about holding on to the things. It's always the fact that as they appear, they're gone. They're like, it's like a world of a dream. It's like a world of mirrors. Like you can never, or a world of smoke. You can never get it. Yeah. It's, and I just couldn't believe that that would, well now I can't believe that that was 
in Christianity. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. But it sounds really negative to the mind. <laughs> but, hey, but you could say the other way as well. I mean, like, you can say anything. It's all association to words. Mm-hmm. And I tend to notice that more colder countries, this is weird, but colder countries tend to be a little bit more attracted to negative speakers, mm. hotter countries tend to be attracted to positive speakers. Isn't that an odd thing? <laughs> Actually, I don't think it's so odd. The colder the country is, the more clothing you need, the more houses you need, and always the opposites attract. So you're fantasizing about no housing Music. and no clothes, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have a few times got yes. to the nakedness and wanting to be naked this weekend. So. <laughs> Come to Northern Europe for the naked retreats. <laughs> Lots! <laughs> was it in your talk yesterday about... When was it yesterday about the orgy? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was talking yeah, about... Oh, yeah. 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 Always me! <laughs> <laughs> but are we already in the most incredibly intimate orgy right yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Far out is it an orgy? <laughs> There's not space between us. No. <laughs> Mine's like, okay, break. <laughs> distance. <laughs> what distance? <laughs> I always think such a funny, funny setup. It's like a light setup, but a really funny way. Yeah. <laughs> because me is looking for what they looking for. For me, is already in it. Yeah. For me, can't see it, but me can't get out what me is looking for. It's such a funny oh, setup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you remember those cartoons that we played last time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love those cartoons. Pixels. Yeah, pixels. Pixels. Yeah. So it's so funny when you see it as a cartoon form. Yeah. <laughs> Where are these pixels? <laughs> you will never be able to see them. to talk about is in love again. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, yes, love. So in the beginning, which is nowhere because there was never a beginning, but in the beginning, (laughs) um, there is just pure aliveness. But that's a weird word because that implies deadness as the opposite. So we kind of think of movement maybe as aliveness or something, or something being alive. You could maybe say beingness, but then again, what's that something being? It's all bizarre words. And there's two sides to this beingness, but there's not really two sides, because it's all one, but we're going to just say there's two sides to this beingness. It's nothing. It's just potential energy, or nothing at all. And it explodes into form and creates form. But this form is still nothing. This form is still still nothingness, oneness, or 
that same potential energy that exploded, or even maybe it's not even potential energy, maybe that's a, it's a word before that, it explodes into potential energy and forms a gun. I remember hearing this joke once about um, in the beginning there was nothing, and then God said, let there be light, and there was still nothing, but you could just see it. <laughs> but incredibly hard to talk about because you can't sit in any word. So you're like, duck, 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 duck. <laughs> jumping and dancing around. So there's this nothingness, and it's not really the beingness is in the middle, that's a load of nonsense, but that's how we're going to explain it today, that's how it's coming out. There's this beingness, and then there's this everythingness, and the beingness, you can say, is everything. Everything is being, but the backside of being is emptiness. Okay, so we start with beingness now. We've done that. We're on to beingness. <laughs> Explain what beingness is perfectly clearly. Now we're at beingness. So there's this beingness, this aliveness. And in this aliveness, it uh, creates a body. Or, that's a little bit more complicated than that, but we'll just start. That it's created a body. <laughs> it's created many things before, but we'll just get to the body. So there's this human body that comes into a life, comes to life. So a baby is born and there is this beingness, which is expressing itself as a baby's body, this beautiful baby's body. And there's no sense of I in the baby's body. There's just pure beingness, pure aliveness. The, body has no, the baby has no sense of inside, outside, right, wrong, good, bad, um, cot, baby, mum, baby. There's just pure beingness, pure aliveness, and everything is happening in that aliveness. And in order for the baby to, the baby's body to experience, there has to be other objects. The baby, in order for the baby to exist, there needs to be a world that exists, a world full of things. So the baby cannot experience without a world full of other things, without the cot, without the air, without the light, without the um, room or whatever, without the environment, the baby cannot experience. But it's not baby, the baby experiencing. We, it, the body of the baby is used for the beingness to experience. It's not the baby really experiencing, but we'll call it the baby. Being this is created the body in order to experience the world. So it's created a brain, and the brain, I assume, although I'm making this up and I'm not a scientist, <laughs> I don't know where I know this from. You could say everything or nothing. Um, but the baby's brain produces awareness, so awareness of other objects, but the other objects are also awareness. In order for there to be awareness, there needs to be other objects, otherwise there would be nothing again. So these all things are happening at the same time. So awareness and the other objects come at the same time. So in the brain, awareness is formed, and then there's um, other objects that perceived through the baby's body. Then after a few years, or maybe after a few months, a mild form of thinking begins. And then thinking is another experience in beingness. So originally there's beingness, so there's nothing, beingness. The baby's body, and with the baby's body, the whole of the world comes alive. And with the awareness, the whole world comes alive. But nothing is separate from the baby's body. That everything else is needed um, for the baby's body to experience. There can't just be a baby's body. Everything else comes with the baby's body and with the awareness of the baby's body or with the awareness that's in the baby's body. So awareness isn't the source of things. Awareness is a functioning in order to experience. <sighs> How are we going there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting this? Yeah. Great. Okay, we just carry on then. Yeah. <laughs> just take a bit of coffee. And it will become even more clear. 
<laughs> okay. Then more things begin to appear in the baby. As the baby's body grows in a world which is not separate from the baby, they're all dependent on each other and are the same thing, the same energy. Um, but the baby's body is being used as the portal to experience. But in order to experience, there has to be objects to experience. So one and the same thing, experiencing and the experienced. So <laughs> the baby's body um, begins to develop more um, things it can do. So our thoughts begin to come in. The name gets put onto the baby, so the baby, the body is a John. And the body begins to have the sense that when it cries, milk comes. <laughs> <laughs> or hug comes. It begins to do this and begins to feel the body. And then it begins to suss out that it can't <coughs> feel the cot. It's so cute when you do it. And then like... So they're beginning to suss out the environment. I've never had a baby, so again, this is all made up. But it's all made up from everything or nothing, so that's okay. Not Lisa. <laughs> um, and then um, they, uh, so they begin to suss out an edge to the body and the edge to the feeling of the body and the edge to other things and what is we would call inside or outside. But the thinking's not that complicated yet. More and more thinking is created. So, um, so they learn about pleasure, crying, and the pleasure comes, the milk comes. Um, they begin to perceive a name of some sort. Um, and then eventually, this energy comes in where, with all this stimuli of feeling the body and all this thinking and the brain activity, they begin to get a sense of, okay, I am the body. That is who I am. And they don't think it, it's an energy that comes in. And they, they, they start feeling like they are something separate from the world. But it's not a really logical thing, it's more of an energetic expression. Suddenly it's, the energy is inside the body, a baby in relationship with the world. And then thoughts <coughs> begin. And all these thoughts are, are influenced by the environment. So they're taught things like what good and bad is. They're taught to be a good boy, so he's called John, he's taught to be a good boy. And sometimes he's taught to be a bad boy, just they think they're teaching him to be a good boy, but they're validating him when he does naughty things. So he begins to get this idea of good and bad, and this is a really important one. What's good to do and what's bad to do. And he gets taught this word choice, that he's got a choice to be good or bad. So these, these um, thoughts begin to run. I've got to choose well. If I choose well, I get a sweet or I get the milk. If I choose correctly, I get pleasure. If I choose incorrectly, I get pain. And, um, and this develops even more as the baby begins to get older. And the whole time the baby is, uh, the, what's happening is the energy is focusing on the thoughts and the stories and on the sensation of the baby. It's begun to believe that that is just who it is, just the baby. <clears throat> So then it begins to be taught, it goes to school and it begins to be taught how to relate to others. And the others are separate and other names and it's begins to be taught that it gets pleasure if it's successful intellectually, if it's successful at school. And this is a gradual thing and it's not an outside world teaching it, it's just like this um, kaleidoscope. It's just one thing moving to another, it's just energy moving round and round, but this is just the kaleidoscope of a baby. It's just the, the outside and the inside. There's no outside and inside. It's just a flow of energy moving that way. And the flow of energy is to identify. That's the thing that happens in the child, is to identify with the body. So, um, so then it gets taught that human love is pleasure. So human love, to get love from others, to get approval from others, is to do good things, or sometimes bad things. It's taught to do bad things and think that that will get its love, it love, depending on the conditioning of the parents and the genetic makeup of the parents. So it gets more and more these um, ideas about where it can get love from. And it begins to learn that pleasure is love, and 
pleasure is out there to obtain. But it's a really gentle movement of energy. It's like a miserably like a chemical reaction happening in the brain. More and more energy goes into this looking for love in the world. And it begins to come more and more solid who you are. And it's amazing to watch kids grow their self if you've got kids. I was with um, a 10 year old kid in the summer. And he's beginning to um, make up reasons to why things happen and why people do things. And it's like sometimes really off and you look and you're like, okay. Like he makes up these stories about why people have done things or why they ha own certain things or why they, and they're really weird stories. I don't know where he's got them from, but they just seem to have formed. And then he, he sees the world through those stories. That, that is like that because they are like that. And it's amazing to watch these, and they really want to be someone. They really want to be and explore being someone. It's exciting for them to be someone. And they get more and more interested in what they look like, in what others think of them. Um, what else do they get interested in? In what, basically, what interests them is getting approval. Because that love and that pleasure gives a high, gives a chemical reaction of highness. It gives a really beautiful feeling. So more and more, the body-mind mechanism is taught to look into the future and to look to the world for its happiness. So it looks in this world of things for its happiness and for its love and for its pleasure. And what a dance it begins to play. And as a teenager, this, or a younger teenager, this can be really exciting. But then it also can become really scary because the ability to imagine the positive things, to get love in the positive things, there's also the ability to imagine losing it in all those things. So the opposite imagination can appear. And this activity of the brain, which I presume is the brain producing all these thoughts, but I don't know, it could be the heart, who knows? It could be the toes. It could be nothing, it's ultimately nothing. But there's an activity happening where there's a looking, looking for love. And this energy gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And sometimes, already now, it seems like quite young teenagers are feeling uncomfortable with their life. They feel this burning sense of not good enough, that they can't do enough things or they can't imagine how to be good enough, how to be loved or they feel it's impossible to get that love in the world of things. And it's even, like I've, been, I've had calls from 10 year, or 13 year olds, um, like young people now are, are beginning to come unsatisfied quicker. And there's a television at the moment which influences this. We get taught, when I was growing up, the big thing was these romantic comedies. It was always about finding the love. <laughs> uh, I think we've moved on more now to tack, 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 tack films. It all seems to be like machine guns and not so, some romantic comedies, but mainly a lot of adventure or action films. And so whenever there's uncomfortableness in the body, the imagination begins to imagine the next way to get love the next way to get that pleasure. And this whole false world is grown, this whole false reality, and these made up stories about why things happen, this limited look on reality. This happened because of, and it names three, of, three events as to why this happened, but really this happened because of everything that's ever happened, you can't separate out anything. And it's okay to communicate, oh, I, ate all the chocolate because I was hungry. I mean, it's okay to, <laughs> to communicate, but really it goes back forever. You ate chocolate because of forever, because of everything that ever happened. Or nothing that ever happened, whichever way you want to put it. Um, And the human begins to get limited perspective. So he gets a limited perspective in thought 
and it believes that this is true. It doesn't even believe it's true, it's just true. These thought systems, he's an asshole, that's just true. They did that to me because they don't respect me enough. It's just true. And the rest of society tells you, yes, he did that because he doesn't respect you enough. <laughs> and that's just true. And we can even go, that's just, well, most of the human population, but it'll be different in different cultures, like in Islamic culture, there'll be different reasons as to why things, compared to Christian culture, but they'll all have reasons as to why things have happened. And you get stuck in, particularly in relationships where it, this sense of wanting love is sparked a lot, you get stuck in this thought pattern of, he didn't give me enough attention because he's scared of women or something. And that, that because we're so conditioned now by psychology, that's like, that feels, yeah, okay, yeah, that's true, yeah, I can see that he's scared. But that is such a limited perspective. That's a very limited psychological idea. And so then we look to all his fears. Well, when he was younger, his, his um, mother, da 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 da, or I can't think of all the stories now. <laughs> His mother, you know, didn't give him enough attention and his dad was a really f scary father figure. And that, there's a limited way we can communicate back to us. It's not why he's treating you unrespectfully. He's treating you, he's not even treating you unrespectfully. That is a false illusion anyway. Nobody can treat you unrespectfully. You can only perceive that they treat you unrespectfully. Hot work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All this hot air coming out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so we be and we begin to but we really believe they're true and then this whole argument starts, you say to your partner, You're treating me like that because you don't respect me because you're scared of your father. And then the other one's like How dare you? You treat me like that because your mother did that to you as a kid. I mean <laughs> Like, we have these insane arguments about words that we've made up anyway, and that we've associated with certain things in a very limited perspective. We've forgotten everything else. There was a movement of everything. And we could talk lightly about things, but there's never an actuality to anything that's said or thought. And you are never, ever going to find what you're really looking for in telling your partner or convincing your partner of everything. I don't know why we're talking about partners. <laughs> All the partners in the room are like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just coming out. <laughs> Mine is in the computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can see you. Yeah. <laughs> And you're never gonna, you're never gonna find peace in convincing them that they've got problems or issues. You're never gonna find peace in convincing them that they need to love you more, or they need to give you more attention. And you can be so sneaky about this because the mind can be so great in convincing itself and the other that, yeah, I know ultimately it won't make any difference, but, you know, relatively, you will just never find anything there. The only freedom is, is this. What's all this? Well, ah, this. This is the only home. This is the only love. Everything will be lost. Like all, you'll never, you'll get them to treat you nicely for 10 minutes and then it'll be like, actually, that's too much attention now. You're too over the top. <laughs> Back off. <laughs> <laughs> and the mind's so great the way it dances and it tends not to notice that 10 minutes ago it said it wanted more attention and now it's like no back off back off <laughs> and those loops will never be for, will never give freedom the body yes can say do the washing up or do this or this, but there's no hope to find peace there I think else will happen. House will just suddenly fall down. Maybe that. Okay. 
Now we've got no house. Or you'll suddenly get a million dollars and then it's a whole different experience. You'll never ever find it in the flow. They even say that people, they did an experiment and people that have been given huge amount of money end up becoming incredibly depressed. It's just never what you think. So this is your freedom. So back to that baby story, all this nonsense that I've gone to, back to that baby story. At the very beginning, there was this beingness, and that beingness has stayed through this whole dance. This whole dance. <coughs> it's always been there. It's everything, and it's nothing. And that is your love. I mean, isn't that the most beautiful message? <laughs> it's not my message. It's just the way it is. The most beautiful message it could be is that your nature, what you always sought, was right here. Was, was you. And it's not actually in the baby. The baby and the whole world are that beingness. It's just the baby is used to experience the world. The baby is just a, a form used to experience it all. But that beingness is actually everything. It's just it's looking from that baby's perspective. So it's not just beingness in here, it's everything and everywhere and everything that's ever happened. And, and I can say all these words and I can dance around them and they're not quite right, but this is, a, this, is, this is known, it's always that same beingness, no matter what comes and goes. And that is the love that you seek. Your nature, which is not a body thing, but it was there even before the baby's body was born, but it, ha it has to view the world through a body. Well, maybe it doesn't. But in this one, it has to view the world through a body. In that dream, or whatever you call it, it's always that beingness where the body has got a chopped off leg, can't hear, can't see, has got all the money in the world, all the pleasure in the world, the same beingness. And it's absolute love. <clears throat> And it's not what you imagine, it's what you are. The mind will constantly go into, it's what you are. It's right here, everywhere. And this speaking that's happening now is a result of everything, or if you prefer the more negative, nothing. That looking there is a result of everything that's ever happened and ever going to happen, which is nothing. You never speak because you want to speak, because you choose to speak. You speak because of everything. They never do something because they chose to do something. They speak because of everything. It's taking everything for this, if we think of the Big Bang. I mean, that's just our made-up story, but everything. And then it comes out. If you've watched um, Lucy, that amazing scene at the end, where it all goes back into the Big Bang. You go out, 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 I think, first. You go out into the whole universe first, and then back into the Big Bang, and then suddenly mm -hmm. nothing, it all yeah. disappears. Yeah. It's amazing. And this here is a result of everything, which has never happened. Nothing. But it's here, the everything. And this speaking is not the truth, because this speaking that's coming out, like everything, is only... How do you say that? It's only... It's like... This speaking is limited to the... Res I can't say it. Because this is a movement of everything, this speaking is only a part of the movement. That's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. Can you sense that? It's like, and then eventually a new speaker will come and then there'll be a pushing into a new way of speaking because that will have, I can't say it. I can feel it. It's like, it's like, what do you the best way I could describe it is like with art. So you know how 
A great piece of art is relative to everything that came before. Mm -hmm. So if you've had somebody doing like, um, is he called Moe? No, well, actually he's different. But you know how like Suzanne, it was suddenly like so different what he did. It was so beautiful what he did and so different from everything that came before. Mm -hmm suddenly that was the famous piece of art and that was what really worked for everybody. And then after time, if someone did a Suzanne again, that was not relevant anymore. It was, went on to new art. It moved on to new, a new painting that came about. So there's no great piece of art. It's always relative to everything else that's happened. And that's the same when you speak about non-duality. So you'll never ever find the truth in non-duality. Like you can never find the right way of speaking about it. It's always relevant to everything else. So you can never speak truth, you can never find truth. But yet you are truth. You can never find it in these words, in anything. Oh, that was an explosion for sure. <laughs> I was on the coffee and the break. <laughs> Shall we open the window? Yes. Okay, yeah. but thanks. So everything you see, everything you hear, or everything that's seen, let's do a more non-duality one, everything that's seen, everything that's heard, everything that's spoken, everything that's eaten and felt, is it, and it's, oh, it's not even you hearing or feeling or seeing it, it's, it's, one insanely beautiful, huge experience. <laughs> and that's the best one. <laughs> the cutest. I know, this is just the exception, that's the god. <laughs> it's the god and the dog. The god and the dog. <laughs> There's two sides, huh? <laughs> And I know the question that the mind wants to keep coming back to, which is what can I do? <coughs> and really what it wants to do is, it, all it wants to do is get to love. That's all it wants to do. And I think a lot of people hearing and listening to this message, they keep getting stuck on, there's nothing I can do. And that is not what I'm saying. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she agrees. You can go outside, you can do something. She's so excited to come in. So then she can dominate the whole room and sit here. <laughs> like, back off guys. <laughs> this is my chicken. <laughs> She's my chicken. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it expresses everything. The delight that oh. <laughs> um, um, what was I saying before the chicken? There's nothing you can do, but that's not exactly what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. That's what the mind hears when I... Because the question comes up, what can I do? And I... It's, it's not the point, what can I do? Oh, Oh. Is it puppy? Is it puppy? <laughs> <laughs> they sweetie. Yeah. There's a puppy. Oh yeah, you gorgeous. <laughs> so, so it's it's not the point, but it's so hard to talk about this because as a child, 
you're taught you've got to choose your happiness, you've got to choose your pleasure, you've got to choose the right way. But it's, it's such a tricky one. Some speakers, they just say, well, you might as well give out something. You might as well? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Lost in the dog. Um, <laughs> some, some speakers say you might as well. You yeah. might. Some speakers, their their theory or what expressed through their body is you might as well do something just to distract the mind, like, and then you can speak about this and all those sort of things. That was not the. That's not the tendency to come out here. But you see, it's not the point, the doing. But the mind is so trained to do, to seek and get, to to think about it and get. <clears throat> Are the words you are saying, pronouncing, yeah. not perceived by us like a story? And with our own story, we try to. There is a fight between the story you are yeah, telling and our own story. That's the negative way of looking at it. Might, that might be something that's happening. Yeah. And then there might be hearing this beyond the story. Ultimately, yes. is always hearing this beyond the story. But yeah, that game might play out for a while of like trying to match up to that story, trying to take on that story as if it's some form of truth. But I think mostly what's happening here is just this bursting of energy of everything. That's everything, everything, this, this, this. But, and then the mind, but even those sort of things, like the mind trying to take this on, and it's going into this kind of victim thing again of what the mind's doing to us. It goes, it, like, there's no victim here at all. Sometimes gives the experience of that, but it's not yeah. victim to anything. But back to this doing thing. So it's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about getting something in the future. But then this activity keeps coming up. What can I do? Because if I do something, then it can feel relaxing now. If I imagine that I can do something, then it relaxes me now. That's okay for that to happen, to imagine that you can do something And that's so okay, the imagination was never the enemy, it was just a functioning that got excited. And it, it's happening, this journey home, which never left home, but this seeming journey, seeming and apparent, we go to Naho, seemingly, <laughs> <laughs> apparent, seemingly, <laughs> The seeming, I can't say it, seemingly the leaving of home. No, I can't do it. Um, it's always going home. That's the only place the story can go. I mean, the story can't really go home, but it can't have ever gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's gonna pop. It's gonna dismantle itself. Mm. It's like Lucy, though. It does it just on its own. And it, just like the river in the river going down the stream or just like everything it's always been happening on its own it's never been about you but it's so easy to get into the trap of there's nothing I can do it's just a depression this is empty, this is meaningless <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's like a it's a trick well, not really a trick how can anything be a trick it's a game a game it's just a That's not what's being talked about here. There's nothing you can do. Who? Who's speaking now? Who's hearing now? Who's looking now? Who's thinking now? Who's feeling now? Just this boundlessness. This everythingness. I can't even believe all this is coming out without a question. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> story should ever be wondered by what happened what is happening huh? the story should ever be wondered by what is happening all the time whatever it is I don't understand should be enjoyed, enjoyed. yeah no, all the actions you're doing the talks you're doing whatever you do walking or even the thinking, of, or even the story, it, it just what it is, and 
you sh it's like you should be amazed for what it is, you not should. creating another story. Well, another you it's not, it's like a should or shouldn't is impossible, that is as it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like it is, it, it, it has got to be a period of depression and a period of feeling meaningless and lousy, then that's the flow that's got to happen. It's not happening to you, it's not happening to somebody that's been alive for 40 years, or 42 years, you told me. <laughs> Just to tell everyone three <laughs> 43 years. <laughs> Oops. Leon knows these things. <laughs> yes, but we understand. You start with 40 and just like your mother, and then yeah. you end with the right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, 72. <laughs> Mum's like, ah. <laughs> um, it's like the illusion that it's happened to you and. You're feeling depressed and you've felt it or you felt it for the last two years and it's because of your story, your life and you've done something wrong or you've done something great. Yeah, I, I could feel lazy for example and say then I shouldn't be lazy. No. So there is a story. Yeah. But it's just the You should accept. No, you can't <laughs> accept it because what's playing in that moment is an expectation of what what this body mind mechanism wants to look like and it's just a thought happening and with an energy to it so there's an expectation of being active and then there's the experience of laziness so there's this conflict that's just the way it goes and that will run its way out and it and there's nothing you have to be you don't have to be what's the opposite to lazy active, active in order to be happy <laughs> No. You don't have to be anything. It's just no. the false idea that activity is your happiness. That activity is what you look for, that it's going to give you that love. It's so never it, going to give it to you. So even if you're lazy and the, 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 the story appears that you shouldn't be lazy, lazy it's then, also perfect. It's also, it's, well, it doesn't feel perfect. That's what I call suffering. Yeah. It feels uncomfortable. But, um, but that's what's happening. How could anything ever be any different from what it is? And that has to play out until it's finished. And it will. Tomorrow you'll be telling your wife, you know, how much energy you've got. And then she'll be like, didn't you feel lazy yesterday? And then you'll get angry because you wanted to see us what you are now. And you're like, no. Like it's, it's always, you're never anything. I'm not talking about you particularly, but you're never anything. It's always just movement happening. There's no you. That makes sense. I missed oh. a little little something there. He said acceptance and then you said that's not the thing. But yeah, it's not about acceptance. How, how because, is that? Because who, who would accept? It's always the opposite. What happens in the uncomfortableness is there's an expectation of, what, of being active that that is going to bring you love. And then the reality is laziness. The freedom is the laziness actually. But it's not about you accepting it because who then would be this third hand of accepting. Yeah. It's just the absence of all that energy and your nature is love. Your nature is what you look for, never what you think it is. So so there's you have but an it's idea. Kind of of what, it, it's well it is as it is, it's just the play of things, it's just the play of the dream. It's like there's this energy moving along saying I need to be this in order to get love. And then the reality is the body's lazy. The body's like, yeah, I want to watch four hours of TV. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, the person, and the mind's like, that's unliberated, that's the, all these, these expectations of what you need to look like. And all of it was, was based on this idea that love is in the future, that love is in behavior. But four hours of TV, is it? You can be so free with four hours, eight hours even, of TV. <laughs> 12 hours. <laughs> 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 Whole season of loss. <laughs> Red Bull. It's always there. It's just the activity of the person that thinks it's in between experience and the experiencer. There's no in between, there's just the movement. And there's nothing that will get you more love. Ever. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I call that, there's no external, but I call that the joke, the external joy. <laughs> <laughs>
the external joy. The, 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 the joy you look at. She's, when she does this, it's insanely cute. <laughs> she's flirting. I call it her flirting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she pushes her bottom towards you, and if you pet the bottom of her bottom... She's like a yeah, yeah, <laughs> people thinking about you in a certain way, thinking you're a nice Percy, not a per Percy, person, <laughs> not a stingy person, a generous person, that will not give you anything. Mm -hmm. That's just movement. They'll change their mind the next day. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm kind of generous actually. <laughs> yes. She she shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> she walks in, sits right at the front. <laughs> it's like the dog is always as she is. She never needs to be anything else. That's her freedom, but it's not her freedom as the dog's body. Her freedom is everything. Because when she's free, everything's free. It's not like there's a separation. Mm-hmm. 
French kissing ones. <laughs> <laughs> what French Japanese kissing? <laughs> <laughs> and Thai. <laughs> 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 They think it's not mine. The sensation is not mine. Yeah. It's not. I cannot produce anything. No. You don't even exist. It's just happening. Mm -hmm. Full on expression, explosion of expression. And there's no one solid thing. It's always moving. You can understand all these like speakers like about tantric sex or all these sort of things, it's like um, the kundalini energy exploding out, these I images of exploding because the, the personal energy is like, it's like a narrow, even though it's an absolute illusion, it feels so narrow, but this is an, ex this is, I don't want to say an explosion back into everything because you weren't ever separate from it, it's just the end of that barrier between everything. They go. She's ready. No, but you were meant to end at six. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Shut up, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all into the romantics and ready for the pack run. Oh, yeah, no. On my bicycle, you're like, no, she's telling you to shut the hell up. Okay. <laughs> So what a beautiful couple of days it has been spending with you guys. I've really loved hanging out and talking and eating and laughing and drinking. It's been a joy. So thank you very much. We do another one as well. You're more than welcome next time. It's a joy here at Stan. Stan is so generous and so amazing. Yeah. Well, he couldn't be anything else. I mean, we're just using our limited words again. <laughs> he couldn't be anything else but give this house at this particular time. And, uh, yeah, and just thank you. This is nothing to do with any particular one of us. This is everything that's expressed itself this weekend. What a beauty. It's like a collaboration of just one. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much, Lisa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Screw Stan, screw Lisa, screw everybody else, the cooks. Yay.
Oh my God. You two are amazing. We love you so much. Thank you for the great food this weekend. Yeah.